Hi everyone, it's Bad Brad here. This video is going to be strictly about setting up your Guy 330X quadcopter um, electronics. It's going to be how to wire your ESCs to the motors and set up the GU 344 3-axis uh, gyro as well as setting up your radio. Now I have a high-tech Aurora 9 um, so the setup is going to be different from what you have most likely. Uh, a lot of people are running Spectrum on these which doesn't really matter but whatever radio you have just follow the manual and I'll show you where to, to look in the manual. I'm going to make this video. So let's get started. Okay, so once you've got your quadcopter uh, frame assembled and the motors installed, I'm going to need to pick and choose which motor is number one. It can be on any arm, it doesn't matter. Um, so just, just determine uh, which motor you want to be number one. Now, what I've done, uh, just for references, I marked them um, and it goes around clockwise one, two, three, and four, uh, which means one and four is the front. As you can see here, um, one, two, three, and four. Now, the manual isn't in color, but if you look at the diagram here on the left, you'll see gray to gray, white to white, and black to black. And over here on two to four, you will see gray to black, white to white, and black to gray. So, what that equates to on the ESCs on motor number one and three is red to red blue to blue and black to black and it's the same for number three so on motor number two you're gonna have red to black blue to blue and black to red on the motor so remember that red on the motor goes to black on the ESC now once you got the ESC's wired up uh, you're gonna need to install the props which I'm not following the manual here specifically, but anyways, as you can see, I painted my props in the front white. So, let me spin this around here. So this is the front of my quadcopter. I'll take a close look at which way the motor spin here. When you're looking at the quadcopter from the top, motor number one should spin counterclockwise. Motor number two should spin clockwise. Motor number three should spin counterclockwise. And motor number four should spin clockwise. So I'm going to skip a few pages here and show you where to install the propellers. So if you look through the, the package you'll see two props are marked R eight by four and a half. These props marked R go on motors number two and motor number four. Uh, the props on one and three are the normal um, props. They are not reversed and then this was the R stands for reverse props. So make sure that the reverse props are on motors two and four. Now I also recommend using Loctite on these spinners. Um, there is very little thread holding these props on which is, isn't very good to begin with so I would use a lot of Loctite on these spinner cones. Okay, Now we're going to go back a few pages here to the GU344 installation. And also before I forget, um, which is very simple, just plug in all four of your ESCs and I'll show you how I did that on mine. I brought it out the center um, of the arms here and around to the bottom. You could drop them straight out the bottom hole but that way you won't be able to mount your battery um, with velcro. So I'd recommend routing them out the side that way you can um, mount up your battery with velcro. So moving on to page number seven. Now, as you can see, they have four of the foam pads on here. I believe I put five on mine um, just to make sure it's, it's good and solid and mounted. But make sure you use these foam pads because they're, uh, they eliminate the vibrations from the unit. So, as you can see on the GU344, there's an arrow. That arrow points towards the front of the vehicle, um, 
which would be motors number one and four. So you want to make sure that's pointing directly straight ahead. Um, I mounted mine on the left side of the chassis here. And also you want to check your switches. Um, you want your X and plus switch to be all the way up. Uh, you probably can't see that in the video, but you want it um, flipped towards the, the top of the unit. And you also would want your CRU um, HOV switch towards the top of the unit. Now the only reason you need to change the CRU HOV mode is if you are not using uh, remote gain. I'd highly recommend using remote gain on this um, because it does take quite a bit of tweaking um, to get it to stop wobbling around in the sky. I also recommend only using CRU mode rather than hover mode. Um, hover mode isn't uh, working quite the best. Um, CRU mode makes it act a lot more like a helicopter. Okay, so you want to make sure your GU-344 is pointing directly straight ahead. You don't want it angled um, to any degree. You want it you know, pointing straight ahead as indicated by the arrow. Otherwise, it won't fly exactly straight when you uh, move the aileron forward or back. Now, you want to make sure the ESCs are plugged in the exact order. Um, so, if you mark your arms, pay very close attention to which ESC is which. And plug them in in order, uh, 1 through 4. And double check to make sure that's correct, otherwise you will have problems um, trying to make this thing fly. Now, on to the receiver end of things. And this is going to vary with whatever receiver you have. You want the connector with three wires plugged into channel number one, the red wire plugged into channel number two, the orange wire plugged into channel number three, the yellow wire plugged into channel number four, and the green wire plugged into channel number five. Now, channel number five, the green wire, is optional. That is the remote gain, which I highly recommend using. So once you got all your your electronics mounted to the board um, with double-sided foam tape, uh, go ahead and neatly wire tie all your wires down to the base plate. Now that we have our electronics all wired up and attached to the 330X frame, we can go ahead and start programming our radio. Now please don't ask me specific questions about your radio. Um, just look in your manual and you'll figure it out. So here I have the high tech Aurora 9. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. I've already got this programmed, so I'm just going to show you a few things. Um, you want to be in airplane mode. You do not need to be in helicopter mode. Um, this is very easy to set up, so just make sure your radio is in airplane mode. Now, on page... Uh, let's see if we can find it here. On page 12 of the manual, there's a little chart here. So, if you have a guy radio, um, these are the normal or reversed settings for each channel. Um, JR is basically spectrum, so if you have a spectrum radio, you can follow the JR tar chart. Or if you have a high-tech, follow the high-tech chart. So you can go in your um, reverse settings. And as you can see, um, aileron is normal. Uh, elevator is reverse, throttle is normal, and rudder is normal as well. I copy that specifically uh, from the manual, so just follow that little chart. It could be wrong, you know. I don't know. It depends on what radio you it depends on what radio you have. So just follow the chart. Now, also, if you're using remote gain, I'll go ahead and show you. Um, oops, um, the gain I have in mind. Um, is 35%. I do not recommend starting with 50%. I re recommend trying um, anywhere from 30 to 40% on your gain. Also make sure uh, your GU-344 LED is red and in CRU mode. If you read the manual, it specifically states um, CRU mode is recommended, and I also recommend that mode as well, even if you are a beginner. Also, what I recommend is only using, um, I also recommend using 50% rates, uh, even if you're an experienced pilot, um, just to hover this thing around and get used to it for a while. I also have a little bit of Expo programmed in. Um, it's just my preference. So, 
So once you got your radio all programmed up uh, with your dual rates and your reverse settings correct, you can go ahead and um, follow page 13 of the manual here. You have to initialize the speed controllers. Now I'm not going to cover this um, simply because I've already done this and there's no need for me to do it. But all you have to do is make sure your transmitter trim is on neutral um, as per number one here. And number two, you want to move the throttle uh, all the way to the highest point. Then you can go ahead and power on the 344. And you should hear a series of beeps um, according to the manual here. So just read that. And if it does that, you should be good to go. So once you've power cycled the unit, after initializing the speed controllers, you can go ahead and check for the movement of the propellers. Make sure they're all spinning as shown previously. Uh, also, you can go ahead and give it a little bit of throttle. Now what I recommend doing is holding onto it with your hand and moving the cyclic stick and making sure you know if you give it down elevator the unit tips forward. If you get up it tips backward. Give it left aileron it tilts left. Give it right aileron it tilts right. And also making sure the yaw uh, goes left and right correctly as well. So that's it for the 330X uh, electronic setup. If you have any questions, uh, just feel free to uh, leave some comments in the comments below um, or message me on uh, RC Groups.